Hey everybody, welcome back to Hope for the Soul. It is so good to have you listening or watching if you watch on Facebook. Or Welcome. YouTube. Yeah, or YouTube. There we go. Okay, you ready for it? Hit me with your best shot. Bubba is back. Fire away. <laughs> so, we've never talked about Bubba's sister. And he has a sister. What's her name? Well... Nameless? She's nameless oh. in this one. <laughs> Maybe we'll find out later on down the road. But she's nameless today. So, um... She is expecting twins, and sadly, she was in a car accident. For, don't laugh at that. I'm not. I'm trying to figure out why that belongs in a joke, but go ahead. <laughs> she was in a car accident, and she was in a coma for six months. But Poor, poor girl. Yes. But the twins were okay. That, like they, they survived. The Lord's faithful. So six months later, she wakes up, and she's like, Oh, my word, because she remembers everything. And she's like, where's my babies? The doctor comes in and is like, hey, they are fine. They are perfectly healthy. And she's like, like, did someone name them? Do I still have to name them? And they said, doctor said, oh, your brother took care of that. Oh, Bubba. <laughs> and she said, Bubba is not the one to name my children. She's like, well... What did he name them? And he said, well, the little girl, you you know, a boy and a girl, the little girl, he named her Denise. And she's like, wow, that's shocking. Okay, that's pretty. I, I can live with that. Well, <laughs> you, I know where you're going. <laughs> he, said, he said, what is the boy's name? He said, oh, the boy is the nephew. Yes, she is. <laughs> <laughs> You had me spoiling it because <laughs> I was laughing before it could get to the punchline. I, I, we we all knew the punchline before you got there. <laughs> but sadly, it's still a good joke. Sadly, but can I ask why Bubba? Or maybe I shouldn't ask. Why is Bubba naming Denise and the nephew, and not the brother-in-law? <laughs> I mean, the book was it complicated? <laughs> Her relationship status could have said it's complicated. Well, maybe he, I mean, I hope he survived the wreck. Well, only she was in the wreck. Okay, well. <laughs> we don't Lord. We don't know where the brother-in-law <laughs> <laughs> Maybe the Lord's still working in their family. Yeah. Maybe. There's hope. There's hope. He's, because right now we still don't know the sister's name. <laughs> he calls all those who are far off. So maybe he's still calling them home. It's so dumb. <laughs> Next week, the chickens will be back, y'all. I don't, I think I would rather keep Bubba. I can't, right now, I can't, I can't um, leave the pastor, Bubba, and the chickens alone. <laughs> well, today we're going to go a little behind a sermon. Last week was First Wednesday, and I taught, preach from the importance of church involvement. And I didn't finish that that message, so I'm going to give a recap today and then hit the points that I was unable to finish. Yeah, you said you only like bar you barely touched it, right? Well, I I, I got a little over halfway through, but yeah, I, I had a lot of content. Yeah, I would rather have too much content than too little content. Yeah, on a Sunday I don't feel a time restraint, but on Wednesdays I once eight thirty yeah. hits, I want people to right. Well, it's they may hang around till nine o'clock, mm -hmm. but I don't want. But I don't want to be the reason why they're there yeah. at nine. So people feel rushed during the week because of school and yep. Star testing this week. I mean, just yep. all kinds of stuff. So we try to respect people's time. But so I talked about the importance of church involvement, and so I want to just recap that Ecclesiastes nine and ten. Whatever your hand finds to do, do it with all your might. For there is no work or device or knowledge or wisdom in the grave where you are going. Paul said this in Colossians chapter 3, verse 17. And, and, and whatever you do in word or deed, do all in the name of, Jesus. of the Lord Jesus, yeah. giving thanks to God the Father through him. Jesus said this in Luke chapter 10. The harvest truly is great. I didn't get here this past week, so I wanted to throw this verse in right now. 
The harvest truly is great, but the laborers are few. Mm. Therefore, pray the Lord of the harvest to send out laborers into the harvest. And I've kind of been, I've kind of been stuck on this verse in my mm-hmm. personal life the last few weeks. And oh, yes, you have. And I'm, I might, I might preach a little bit from it this Sunday without even really referencing this verse, but I think more than ever before people need to be involved in something bigger than they are. And as Christians, the best thing for us to be involved in is the kingdom of God. Yeah. And God chose the church to build his kingdom. So the church is not man's idea. The church is not a pastor's idea. The church is God's idea. Mm -hmm. So much so that before his ascension into heaven, Jesus told the disciples to go and wait, go, go and pray, go and wait for the promise of the father. And, uh, as they were waiting, the Holy ghost was poured out. We see this in acts. And then the early church was birthed. The church wasn't birthed because Peter wanted a church. The person the church wasn't birthed because the other disciples wanted someone or something to pastor. The church was birthed because it was God's plan for humanity. Right. In other words, you are not a true Christian if you do not belong to a church. Mm-hmm. You can have a personal relationship with Jesus, but if that personal relationship doesn't drive you to be connected to people outside of yourself yeah. and an entity outside of something you control, then you are not a part of the church. Mm-hmm. You may love the Lord. You you can even be filled with the gift of the Holy Spirit, but discipleship cannot happen. Yeah, you can grow. Yeah, you can know God's word, but you don't get to love God and love people outside of the church. Um, I've said it like this several times. The Lord's not coming back for people. Mm-hmm. He's coming back for the church. Yeah. So we have to do our due diligence to be a part of the local church. There's some good local churches. There's some bad local churches. There's some local churches that preach the Bible. There's some places that call themselves a church that don't preach the gospel. Mm -hmm. So we have to, this is why our personal relationship with God is so important because we have to rightly divide the word of truth so that when we hear false teaching or we are around uh, Christians in name only, we can rightly divide that. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And then we can find a body of believers and attach ourselves to. And it's not, it's more than just attaching ourselves to it's, submitting ourselves to so and then whenever you find that group of believers you have to get involved you don't just show up but you have to get involved in the mission simply put if god's work is going to succeed then we must get involved Mm -hmm. god chose the church god chose people to perform his will on the earth now he can move to be his hands and feet. Exactly. He can move and his will is performed in spite of us. Sometimes mm-hmm. many times it's, it's performed outside of us or without us, but that's not his plan. His plan is for us to be attached to the church. So God has placed himself within the church, not, not outside the church. And so everything that he wants to accomplish on the earth, he wants to use the church to accomplish. And obviously there's some things that humanity can't accomplish. There's prophecies. There's mm-hmm. there's other things mm-hmm. that are going to happen because it's God's plan. It's a supernatural act um, that the church can merely participate in just as the uh, a pagan culture can. Yeah. But through that, God still uses us. Um, and so I, I, I just think it's so important that when we call ourselves Christians, we're not putting out a we're doing more than just putting an identity upon ourselves. Mm-hmm. We live in a day and age where we can identify as whatever we want to, right? So you can identify as something unbiblical and ungodly, but yet still identify as a Christian. And you not be, for instance, you can have gender dysphoria and identify as a gender that you're not and not be that gender, and then also identify as a Christian. And guess what? You're not a Christian either because the life you are living is contrary to the word of God. That doesn't mean you don't love God. It doesn't mean that God doesn't love you. But it, what it does mean is you haven't brought your life into submission to God's word. So when we call ourselves a Christian, it's important that we truly be Christians. Mm-hmm. And when we identify as Christians, it's more than identity. It's a purpose. Mm-hmm. 
So when God's mercy and grace flow over my life, it's not just that I experience his mercy and grace and I speak in an, un, in an unknown tongue after I repent of my sins and I'm baptized in the name of Jesus. It's more than that. I now become the hands and feet of Jesus, as yeah. you said, babe. Yeah. And I push back against the unrighteousness right. and ungodly culture in which we live. We do this through church involvement. We do this through community involvement. We do this through school involvement. Mm-hmm. We do this through family involvement. We do this. If we walk into any type of sphere or circle of influence, doesn't matter what it is, we are called to use our godly influence right. to shine the light of Jesus into the darkness. And so it's re- it's really hard for Christians to step into godly influence outside the church if they won't step in and step in and fulfill godly influence inside the church. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So um, I'll touch a little bit on this Sunday, so I don't want to speak too much of this. But before harvest ever happens, revival comes. In other words, before Jesus saved Gentiles, Mm -hmm. before the Holy Spirit was poured out to Gentiles, what happened? First, he saved his chosen people. Mm -hmm. He saved the Jewish people. Mm -hmm. And he told them, go into Samaria, Judea, Mm -hmm. to the uttermost parts of the earth. So if we we want to see a harvest, if we want to see kingdom impact and our kingdom reach increase in our community, we must first realize before our reach can ever increase, God must increase in us. Mm -hmm. So long before there's new ground taken in the kingdom, there has to be a revival of the called and the chosen. Mm-hmm. So um, I, I got to stop there or I will preach Sunday's message right now and yeah. ruin it yeah. before I get there. But Paul, okay, I have, I have a pause just for a second go because ahead. I taught this uh, to Conroe kids a, a few months ago. And I thought that uh, when they did the, when they did the object lesson, I was like, wow, this is great for kids. I love teaching Sunday school. And probably my favorite, why I love it the most, is, for instance, talking about go and making disciples and how kids, how can we make disciples? Like we think, you know, kids think, and I can remember thinking this as a kid, how can I do this? I'm just a kid. I'm just eight years old. And so anyways, I'm like, how is this going to be like interesting, you know, for a kid? uh, Oh yeah, let's go and make disciples, you know? (laughs) And so, but the object lesson in the lesson was, okay, you don't want to play ball by yourself. You don't want to play kickball by yourself. You don't want to throw a ball by yourself. You want to have someone doing it with you. And so they use that ball of, Hey, I'm, I have this ball And now that I have the truth, I want to go and throw it to somebody else. Oh, that's so good. Wasn't that awesome? That's so good. And so I'm telling the kids, but before I get to the object lesson, I'm like, how we do this is, you know, hey, friend, you know, my church, we do this. We have this type. We have fun stuff. But then we also learn about Jesus. We learn about the Bible. And I said, now take this ball. We don't want to play. Of course, we can play by ourselves. But it's not fun. It's fun when I'm throwing it to whoever, you know, I'm throwing it to a friend and both of us are playing. And then it's even more fun. Kickball is not fun with just two people. Baseball is not fun with just two people. We're adding nine people per team. We're adding on to our team. And so now that we have the ball, we're going to throw it to somebody else. So good. And that truth, that ball is truth. You know, that ball is learning the word of God. That ball is coming to church. That's so brilliant. So the kids were like, I get it. (laughs) So you can teach them the importance of making new friends at school to literally play ball with. Yes. But then also say, okay, more than just the activity. Yeah. The relationship with this person needs to grow and you need to increase your influence and share the God. Oh, it's so good. So like when I got that lesson that week, I was like, oh, you know, sometimes I'm like, this isn't exciting, you know? And when I really got into it and I'm reading it, I was like, well, I'm wild right now. (laughs) I'm I'm an adult, but I'm wild right now. So good. Yeah. So just to break it down for anybody who's watching, (laughs) who has kids that, hey, it's a simple analogy. That's exactly right. 
Paul said, I am a debtor to the Greeks, but also to the barbarians. What, what he meant when he said this in Romans is that I'm indebted to those who are within the culture that I am accustomed to, but I'm also indebted to those outside of yeah. the culture that I'm accustomed to. Yeah. And so many times people that hang out around the church have left their old lifestyle and God mm-hmm. has transformed their life and given them a new reason and a new purpose. But in that, they have detached themselves to pe- from people who still need to be saved. Yeah. And we become debtors to people of our same culture, people who speak our same language, people who vote like we do, people who worship like we do, people who believe doctrinally like we do, but yet we detach ourselves from the yeah. barbarians, the people yeah. who don't understand us, the people who may not even like us, the people mm-hmm. who there may be indifference with. Mm-hmm. And so Paul said, I am indebted not only to God, I'm indebted to his church, mm-hmm. but I'm indebted to the people far from God and his church. Uh, so I think that we need to be reminded that the spirit at work in our life, if God's spirit doesn't drive us to fulfill the, the greatest two commandments that Jesus ever spoke, yeah. to love our God and to love our neighbor, then really is the spirit at work in our life? Mm-hmm. Are, are we participating in religious actions, but God not in our life? I'm not saying that, that we're not doing good things. I'm not saying that we're not doing noble things that the Lord approves of. But if we're doing things that the Lord approves of while missing out on reaching the lost, we yeah. have missed yeah. the whole reason yeah. of why God saved us. He saved us not only so he can have communion with us. He saved us so we can throw the ball, throw the ball to someone else. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. And we we help them grow in their discipleship journey, and God changed their life forever. So that's why we have to check our motive of why we want to be involved around yeah. the church, mm-hmm. why we are involved in the kingdom of God. If we're involved for our own personal significance, that's a wrong motive. I'm not saying that you're not doing a good thing, mm-hmm. but why do you want to do mm-hmm. a good thing? Mm-hmm. Um, so worship is more than public praise and prayer. Well, I think... So, okay, doing it for ourselves. I think if it's coming from a good place. Absolutely. Um, like if if I'm going through a hard time, no matter what it is, and if I've told this to people, hey, get your hands busy. That's right. And do something. No, your problems may not go away. I'm not saying that this is a cure-all for your problems of once you serve, everything's going to go away, but it's going to help you mentally exactly right you know your problems still may be there when you leave but you're occupying your mind for the good being involved in something bigger than we are does multiple things Mm -hmm. number one when i'm going through loneliness but yet i'm involved in the kingdom of god i'm involved in my local church yes i'm lonely but my involvement forces me to get my eyes off of myself yes and for that two hours or that three hours or that two or three times a week I'm not focused on me, and Mm -hmm. I focus on Mm -hmm. others. For instance, we've exercised this in our own personal life. If we feel things getting tight in our life, what do we do? If it's our finances, we give more, and the Lord will break that. If we find ourselves relationally relationally lonely, we don't pray for God to send us friends. We look for a friend. We look for someone that needs a friend. And so, yeah, I'm not criticizing saying that any involvement that suits our that, that mm-hmm. suits our own needs is bad. No, because yep. when we do serve the needs of others, yep. God meets our needs. Mm-hmm. But if we're doing something around the church only to have our need met, right. we're missing out oh, on the yeah. whole purpose. Yeah. We, we we are hurting ourselves. We are robbing ourselves of a blessing that yep. God has for us. Uh, that's why true worship is praise. Yes, it is prayer. It is worship. But what are those three things? All three of those are involvement. Mm -hmm. I'm involved in my personal relationship with Mm -hmm. Jesus. I am involved with his church. I'm involved with his body. I'm Mm -hmm. involved with the local church that he has planted me in. So that's why we can't have enough people involved at Conroe Church. Yeah. Like, it doesn't matter how many people we have involved. It will never be enough. Mm Mm-hmm. Because as long as there are lost people in this community, yeah. there's more space for people to be involved. Now, 
our leadership style is we don't ask people to be involved. No. We give opportunities, and mm-hmm. if people seize that opportunity, great. But we don't go ask, hey, we heard you're gifted in this area. Will, will you serve in this area? Because we're always going to have to ask them. Yeah. If we manipulate, we'll always have to manipulate. If we entice, we'll always have to entice. Now, sometimes that makes it hard because people might not step up like we think they should or like God has intended them to be. But that's just where that that's just our operation. That's our style of leadership and ministry. We will not manipulate. We, we will not guilt people into being involved. Yeah. But we will lead you with compassion. We will preach and teach to you with compassion and passion that hopefully will drive you yeah. to the revelation of I have to be involved in this kingdom. Yeah. If my involvement in the kingdom only blesses me, I don't have involvement. I'm a spectator. Mm-hmm. I'm not a participator. Mm-hmm. You know, we live in a day and age that likes to document versus spectate. Like, we'll go to a concert, watch the concert, and watch the concert through our Instagram stories camera. Mm-hmm. We'll miss out on all the moments mm-hmm. because in, instead of participating in a moment, we want to document a yeah. moment. And I get it. I mean, we're documenting this moment right now yeah. on, on video. So I get that to a certain extent. But when it comes to the important things of life, we have to move past documentation. And we have to get to the spirit of what God wants to do in our life. There's a place for everyone to be involved at Conroe Church. Mm -hmm. There's a place for everybody to be involved. Mm -hmm. If you don't go to Conroe Church, there's a place for you to be involved in your church. Um, You know, we're trying to make easy on-ramps for people to be involved. Um, You know, it's important for us that there's roles for people to fulfill within the ministry of Conroe church that doesn't require them to even be saved. Mm -hmm. Like that's not, that shouldn't be confrontational. That, that, that shouldn't be um, a taboo thing to say because there has to be a point of contact for everyone. Um, I said it like this. You don't have to go through 52 weeks of Bible study to be, to be qualified to open a door, Mm -hmm. to open a door. All you have to do is love God and be moving towards God. Yeah. It's that simple. Now, if this isn't the case at your church and you don't go to Conroe Church, then submit to that. But I'm mm-hmm. talking for the culture here yeah. at Conroe Church. Um, there are certain areas that do require greater commitment. There are certain areas that require an intense level of sacrifice and personal change. Mm-hmm. And we make no apologies for that. We make no apologies for that because we believe that's God's plan for our life. We should all eventually get to the point to where we can stand on a stage or stand in a classroom or teach yeah. a Sunday school lesson. We yeah. we should all eventually get to that point in our relationship with God. If that takes you six months or if that takes you six years. Well, it can also be um, for, for the man or woman that comes in and it's a struggle to even get through the doors. It's a, it's a miracle that they showed up. That they showed up. And in their mind, when they look at those people on the platform, that is a great role model to have, most of those people. Yes. And that is a great role model to have. But in their mind, if they're struggling to even walk through the door, they're probably also thinking, I will never be able to amount to that. But if I can start small by opening a door. Operating a camera. Operating a camera. Running pro presenter. If I can do that, that's just a stepping stone of what is to come. Serving snacks or helping create yeah. crafts. Yeah. Working in the parking lot. Oh, my goodness. Yeah. Yes, yes. Um, whenever you walk in Walmart, the person that's greeting you at the door does not have the same expertise as the man or woman who's running that multi-million dollar store. Yeah. There's a vast level yeah. of experiential difference, but also commitment to the job. Mm-hmm. However, that person opening the door and greeting you and passing out disinfectant wipes and giving you whatever you need to get into the door, they are just as important as the man who runs oh, the yeah. store, the woman who runs the yeah. store that you probably have never seen in 15 or 20 years. Yeah. But they're just as important. Where we're at in our careers, where we're at in our relationship with Jesus Christ, it's all different, but we're on the same team, mm-hmm. and there's room for everybody here at Conroe Church. Yeah. Um, 
This is why the motive of our involvement matters. There was room for everybody at the cross. Oh my goodness. There was a, there was a thief. Yeah. That Jesus said, you're t- today you're going to be with me in paradise. Yeah. We didn't speak in tongues. He wasn't baptized. No. Guess what? We don't get to dictate who God no. saves and how he saves no. them. And thank God that I'm not him. Thank God. <laughs> there thank was a God. Roman soldier. <laughs> yep. There was Mary, the mother of Jesus. There was John. There was Mark. Yep. You had people from all walks of life who wept. Yep. And recognize what was happening okay, at the cross. But look, think of this. Okay, so there was the man that was beside Jesus. Mm-hmm. But there was also his disciples there that was also betraying him the mm-hmm. same day. The people that who had it. The the people who looked the part. Yeah. They had were it. doing worse than the the people who were literally putting yes. nails in Jesus' hands. Yes. Sin is sin. Sin is sin. It doesn't matter what you look like or where you come from or what you profess or who you profess to be. Yep. Sin is sin, and God will forgive us all. Yep. And he'll use us all. So if there's room at the cross for everybody, there's room for everybody. At Carmel right Church. Yeah. There's room. Now, we're, now, that don't mean that you get to just preach whenever you want to preach. Because <laughs> yeah. Yeah. there's levels of discipleship. There's, Absolutely. There's a trajectory of growth. Yes. But if we don't make a room... For, if we don't make room for a thief that's realized he's done wrong, that gets a revelation that, hey, God has more for me, yeah. then we might be worse than the thief yeah. if we don't make room for someone We say like that. that we're a church that offers hope. Hope. And so we have to we have to walk the walk. People with hope don't need hope. Uh-huh. Only the hopeless need hope. Uh-huh. And the hopeless are far from God. You want me to preach with you on Sunday? You're preaching with me right now, girl. <laughs> We don't serve to get our needs met, even though our needs are met through serving. I pray that yeah. I pray this every Sunday morning in our pre-service in our pre-service huddle, Lord. As we are meeting the needs of your people, I thank you that you are meeting our needs. As we love people yeah. with sickness in their body and pain in their body and marriage issues when they walk in the door, I thank you that you're healing the sickness in our body yeah. and, and 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 the squabble that we had with our wife or our husband yeah. this week. We serve as an act of love and worship unto the Lord. Simply put. We serve to please God. Yeah. And when we please him, he showers down blessings, Mm -hmm. deliverance, Mm -hmm. discipleship, these things. So where do I begin? Where do I begin? Well, the first place that we begin serving in the kingdom of God is in our prayer and our worship. Yeah. I've already talked about this a little. That is the first spot. Let me say, you don't have to be saved to pray. No. Otherwise, how would you Mm -hmm. ask God to forgive you of your sins? That is a prayer. Yeah. I heard, I heard one guy say that um those you can't truly worship God if you're not full of the Holy Spirit. Well, let's talk about all those in the Old Testament that weren't filled with the Holy Spirit. Yeah. Let's let's talk about a lot of people who've worshiped God and felt the power of God. Let's talk about us mm-hmm. who have been far from God in our life mm-hmm. but yet still heard a song on the radio or heard a song at a concert or a church service yeah, absolutely. and we worshiped. Okay. Um so praise and worship is where we begin our involvement in the kingdom of God. The next thing is faithful church attendance. Ouch. I make no excuses yeah. for preaching about faithfulness. Uh-huh. Now I recognize faithfulness looks a lot different today. We live in a global economy. We have people that travel. We yeah. have people that work all hours of the day. The, the nine to five is pretty much gone nowadays Yeah, because people are on, Microsoft Teams and they're, you know, we've got people that come to church and they're working at church. Yeah. You know, they got to make, they, they got to send a quick email. They got to step outside for a quick call on a Sunday morning. And then add the commute on top of add it. Add the commute. It looks different. Okay. Yeah. And I'm not used to it. Yeah. Because as millennials, we were raised in a day where you went to church. If you're not to church at Sunday morning, Sunday yeah. night and Wednesday night. Yeah. Okay. So it looks different. And if we're not careful, we'll get real legalistic about this. Yeah. Okay. But I will say, I, I will still say that we better have the same commitment to the house of God and the things of God. Right. If you can't be there, hey, you can't be there. Mm-hmm. And for a guy like me, a girl like you to get mm-hmm. mad, that's not going to help anybody. That's gonna that's only going to push them further away. But if you can be there, mm-hmm. you ought to be at the house of yeah. God. That's your first level of involvement in God's kingdom. Don't discredit the value of simply praise and worship. I'm not involved. I just show up. Oh, no. 
you are involved. Your praise breaks. Mm-hmm. You, uh, your praise is someone else's breakthrough. Mm-hmm. And so um, it starts at the house of the Lord. So if you're going to sing, sing with passion on the stage or in the pew. Yeah. If you're a musician, you got to play with excellence. If you work first impressions teams, Conroe Kids, Conroe Youth and Young Adults, if you serve on the cleaning team, the parking team, production team, and within all these teams are probably five or six roles or more on each team. Mm-hmm. There's so, so many roles that each team has. Um, but you have to be involved. You have to start somewhere. Mm-hmm. Best place to start is faithfulness to the house of God. And when you're faithful, God's going to give you a burden. Yeah. Not just to serve in the house, yep. but he's going to give you a burden to serve outside the house as well. We'll talk about that this Sunday, though. Mm-hmm. Factors of involvement. There's four factors. There's the talent factor. And there's three others, but let's start with the talent factor. We want everyone to be involved, but if you're not gifted in an area, we don't want you involved in that area. <laughs> if you don't like kids, you probably... You do not need to serve in Conroe Kids. <laughs> If you're grouchy, uh-huh. you do not need to be on the first impressions team. Yeah. Yeah. It Well, hold on. If you don't like people. There you go. <laughs> if you don't like people. Yeah, the first impressions team is probably not the spot for you. I'll say this. If you don't like people, you're not saved. <laughs> <laughs> hold on. Sometimes, sometimes I talk too much. <laughs> no. <laughs> Never. Sometimes my kind of people is not for the first yeah. impressions team. That's so great. I'll go back to Ecclesiastes chapter 9. Whatever your hand finds to do, do it with all your might. Do it with everything you have. So ask yourself, what gifts and what talents has God given me? Yeah. Then assess how you can use that gift and that talent and that passion in the kingdom of God. Yeah. He's... He hasn't give you he, he hasn't gifted you with talent and ability so you can use in your career and benefit corp, and benefit only corporate America. A lot of times the same things he's gifted you with for your career you can use and even receive a greater reward, greater impact if you use it in the kingdom of God. Um, there's so many places to be involved at the church. If you have neat handwriting, if you like, if 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 you're a note taker, if you're a list taker, you can make sermon notes. You can text them to your friend. You can you can make them available. We can use them on social media. Um, if you like to teach, small groups. So so many people say, well, you know, I'd uh, I'd like to serve, but they won't ask me to serve nowhere. They won't give me something to control. Twice a year, we give you uh-huh. something that can be your own, uh-huh. a small group. And guess what? It can be anything you want it to be. Mm-hmm. I mean. I mean, it don't with, need to be. It don't within, need to be sinful. With, within reason. But if you, I mean, don't get too carried away. It, if you like to yodel and you're mad that we won't let you yodel on a Sunday. Play the spoons. You, you can a yodel. Spoon, you can have. Small group. A bluegrass small group. I would go to that. I, I would too. Like I was going to say, you're, you're kind of poking fun. But I'm I not poking go. fun. Like. <laughs> Go. We're not going to do that on a Sunday, but I would join that small group. Yeah. If 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 you're one of these people that say, you know, I, I just don't get fed, you don't go real deep on a Sunday morning. Well, that's intentional mm-hmm. because we got to shoot for the people in the deep end of the pool and the shallow yep. end of the pool. But there's small groups at this church yep. that go deeper than I can comprehend sometimes. Yeah. So there's involvement. There's a place for you to serve. There's a place for you to be served here. At Conroe Church, um, are you a tradesman? My Lord, we've got so many air-conditioned units around here. Always something broke. My Lord, there's always a car battery dead. There's always a van battery dead. There's always there's always a commode that's broke. There's always a plumbing issue, electrical issue. Number two, the personality factor. We must be honest with ourselves regarding our strengths and weaknesses. We talked about this just, just a few seconds ago. Um, and from the leadership aspect, Let me just say that many people desire to be a leader, but they don't possess the skill set to properly lead others in the manner in which they desire. That means you can't lead others well if you can't lead yourself well. Yeah. To lead effectively, you have to lead your family well. Mm -hmm. Why do people want to join your small group if they see that you can't even control your own family? 
Hmm. How are you going to control a small group? How are you going to control the dynamics? This is uh, this is Bible. This is yeah. what Paul wrote to deacons and elders and bishops and pastors. This is, you know, there's there's multiple writings that Paul wrote to Timothy, and it's not just about pastors and and, and preachers. But if you want to lead others well, you have to lead yourself well. You have to possess your vessel with sanctification and honor. So you have to be honest with your personality, with your strengths, with your weaknesses, where you're strong, focus on that, where you're weak, just focus on being better there. Right. Um, you work well with others. Are you a team player? Are you a peacemaker? Can you handle pressure and opposition? Can you handle deadlines without crumbling under pressure? Can you manage your time well? Hey, there you go. Can you manage your time well? Do people want to be around me? You know, this sounds like a job interview. But really, our spiritual giftings, you know, we, we have to ask ourselves these questions and we'll figure out where, where God's place is for us to be involved in his kingdom. I'll say this. Are you a person that's always surrounded by conflict and drama? No, I'm not. We try not were, to be. Were you asking me? No, I'm just, <laughs> I, I'm asking those on the other side of the mic. I got you. <laughs> but... People don't want to be around yeah. people who's always in the middle of conflict yep. and drama. Yep. You have to, if you find yourself, that doesn't mean you're a bad person. Well, because that drama don't stay with that person. That drama will bleed on us. Drama's contagious. Yeah. Yep. Drama's, it'll spread. It'll spread. Number three, the time factor. This is really important. And we've, speaking of time, we need to wrap this up. So, but I, but, but I, but I want us to talk about this. This is something that you and I talk a lot with to our leaders and our ministry development team. Um, that you can be involved in the kingdom of God and you need to be involved in the kingdom of God. But if you're involved outside your family and your family's not healthy, you need to make sure your family is healthy first. Yeah. What does it profit a man to gain the whole world and lose his soul? Yep. What does it profit a saint to be involved in his church and the work of the ministry but have an unhealthy family? Yeah. What does it profit me and you, babe, to be so involved in our calling and our passion here in this city at Conroe Church. But if our kids despise what we do yep. and the place we go, the place we go to work, the place we go to church, and that's we're very, doing it all wrong. That's very easy to get there, especially yeah. with you being pastor dad. <laughs> Kiki yelled that in the cul-de-sac the other day, and our neighbors were like, what? <laughs> I just waved at him and kept going. <laughs> that makes me so happy and proud. Um, but it's it's very easy to for them to get there because well, dad always has something going on. Yeah. So it's this is something we have to guard. These are conversations we have. Yeah. Our responsibility of, hey, this isn't a job. Like we're blessed that we get to be this yeah. family, yeah. that we get to serve these people, our church. So that's something that's always at the forefront of our mind because you are Pastor Dad. Yeah, yeah. And so this is why I like Pastor Dad and Pastor Babe is what we Pastor call Pastor Babe. Yeah. <laughs> um, this is something that I tell our leaders: like you're, you are leading in the church. You have influence in the church. You're also leading a small group, and you're a part maybe of a small group or two. Where do you have time for family? Yeah. Like, I'm not telling you to not be involved in the church. I want you involved in church. Yeah. But I don't want you involved in church at the expense of family time. Yep. Well, I can just bring my family with you. No, your kids need to know that you value them enough yeah. that your home is your sanctuary. you got to have discipline. Yeah. You've got to discipline yourself. Yeah. I mean. And it's hard. It's not easy. I lead a small group, and I'm a part of one small group. Yeah. And it's the. It's it's dad's small group. It's men's breakfast once a month on yeah. Saturday morning. Y'all do like a devotion too. Right? We don't even do or yeah yeah, but it's like five minutes while we're eating. Yeah. It doesn't it's it's it doesn't take any more time. We're getting the word and eating. Yeah, like. but I, I I did that one because it requires the least of me. Yeah, and that doesn't make me bad. No, but I'm involved in the church. I'm involved in building relationship with the men in that small group, mm -hmm. and I'm taking my boys with me. Mm -hmm. But they also know that Saturdays after that, that's the only thing we're doing yeah. church related. The rest yeah. of the day, it is only our family yeah. and nothing else. So the, the time factor is so important and we have to respect people's time. We talked about this a lot the past few months here on the pod, mm -hmm. but 
I think it's important that the church will never be healthier than the families are. And so if we give space for families to have quality family time, go to Galveston, go to Kima, take a day or two and go to San Antonio, Austin, go do yeah. something fun. Your family will gain strength and then you'll come back and have more strength to be involved. Okay. So that's number three. We have to hurry. The church factor. It takes, if people understood how much it took to operate a church, I'm not just talking about money, but that too. Um, if people knew how much it costs to keep the lights on, to have toilet paper, we were joking. We were in a group text this week and I forget how we got there, but I said, if people, so, some people just think that a truck pulls up and gives free toilet paper and just never have to pay electric bill, lights are just always on. You know, some people don't understand the business side of the church, yep. but not just the business side, how many volunteers it takes yeah. to operate one ministry. Mm-hmm. Forget all the ministries. Mm-hmm. Ha- I, I don't even know. I'm sure I can find out on my phone on Planning Center. But how many people a Sunday does it take just to operate Conroe Kids? Yeah. Probably 10 or mm-hmm. more. Probably mm-hmm. more than that. And that's mm-hmm. that's just a couple classes, three classes, four classes. Yeah. Um, so, um, and then the support staff for that, Conroe Youth, maintenance, uh, worship teams, cleaning, parking teams. I've already mentioned some of these. Baptism. Oh, my goodness. We're baptizing someone tonight at church. Mm-hmm. Looks like we're baptizing someone this Sunday, Sunday. at church. Yeah. It takes someone maintaining the baptistry. You want it mm-hmm. clean. You want the water warm. You want the pH levels right. It takes somebody helping get, you know, a lady or man showing that person where the changing room is, the proper clothes to wear, then someone to baptize. That's four people for one person being baptized. Mm-hmm. It takes so much outreach, web, social media, administrative. There's so much to be done around the church. Well, how do I start? You begin with praying. You begin with fasting. And God will lay a burden on your heart and a place for you to be involved. Do you have anything you want to close with? I think this is a wrap. That's a wrap. That's all, folks. The harvest is great, Jesus said, but the laborers are few. Yep. And if Jesus struggled with finding enough workers, it's no coincidence that we're struggling Absolutely. to find enough workers. And that's right. not something we have to be ashamed of. Nope. Like, if Jesus struggled with it, of course we're going to struggle with it. So if you're listening today and you're not involved in Conroe Church, pray and ask the Lord to put a burden on your heart to be involved. Love you guys. Thanks for tuning in. We'll see you next week right here on Hope for the Soul.